You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, Dean. Johnson. After Buzz TV. AfterBuzz Studios in Los Angeles, California, presented by Maria Menounos and Bing.com, and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies, this is AfterBuzz TV's Once Upon a Time in Wonderland After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. And now, another post-game wrap-up show for your favorite TV show, it's AfterBuzz TV's Once Upon a Time in Wonderland After Show. <laughs> Hey, 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 I'm recovering from being deaf. Uh, <laughs> the music was played really loud in our ears. And I, I was like, ooh. Uh, Bing is for doing, and we are here doing another Once Upon a Time in Wonderland after show. I am your host, Jackie Borowski, and with me is Keaton Markey. Yes, hi, Mike, guys. Marky Mark, the Mark Sire of Evans, and Tiana Hobson. Hello. And in the booth, we have Phil. Hello. What was that music from? It sounds very... Um, Danny Elfman-ish. It, it's, I looked it up. It's called Once Upon a Time and Wonderland theme song. <laughs> oh, <laughs> wow. <laughs> I have been had. Okay. <laughs> this is episode five, A Heart of Stone. Um, we have some dogs in here, too. We have Sparky and Chloe. They're, they are running around They're somewhere. running around somewhere. Chloe almost started engineering. It's a Friday night, guys. We're having a party. We are. <laughs> we're having a dog party and a people party. And now we're going to talk about Anastasia and Will. Um, I like this I like this episode because she we get to see more we get to see some actual range in her flashback. Mm -hmm. And she's not just being one note angry B I T C H monster. I have always liked the Red Queen. I have always, uh, be before I even really knew who this actress was, like I, I will agree, yes, she's probably had some work done, but I think this actress is perfect for the Red Queen. And by being able to see her play kind of the Anastasia side, we kind of see her transform into who she is, and we have more of an understanding of why she has become that way. And, you know, she's just very power hungry, and she's, she was raised by a mother who wants who is constantly telling her, you need to better yourself, you need to better yourself. So uh, you kind of get why she is the reason, or why she is the way she is. And I thought she did so good kind of showing that character arc this episode. I think it was, uh, can we also talk about the mom's casting? How much was the mom like that actress, Emma, Emma uh, Rigby, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. the, the woman who was cast as the mother was just like her. I was like, she sounds like her. She kind of moves like her. Yeah, she talks did a great like job her. On that. I was like, what good casting. Good and, job. And she kind of reminded me of Cora. Mm -hmm. She did. Yeah, she reminded me of Cora because, you know, she's constantly pushing her daughter to be better and she has these big goals and ambitions for her daughter that mm -hmm. her daughter doesn't necessarily want. The difference here is that, you know, Anastasia got to go off with her true love, even though she ended up burning him in the end. But Regina never got the chance to actually, you know, leave with her true love. Mm -hmm. I mean, she Anastasia was kind of strong enough to tell her mom no, where we all like mm -hmm. Regina has never been strong enough to say really no to her mom. But do, who do you guys think? Well, I mean, the, in Regina's mom defense, is, her mom is, is like Cora. insanely powerful. But who do you guys think this mother could be? I know because, because she has I, two si other sisters. Mm -hmm. Like I, I think it's it's Lady Tremaine, and I do think it's Anastasia, and then who, whoever the other Cinderella sister is, and then Cinderella. I definitely do, just because I did think of Cinderella. The seven. plot is the same, where the mom's like trying to push her daughter to be royalty. Mm -hmm. It just it just seemed like that's that. who I thought of. I just thought it was interesting to, that she said, at least I have your other sisters, mm -hmm. you know, where she was actually taking claim in Cinderella. So yeah. if it is Cinderella's stepmother, where in the relationship is this? When, right. you know, is Cinderella already a princess? And that's why she's like, you should have been a princess, too. Mm -hmm. um, so that's why she's kind of claiming Cinderella, because it doesn't seem like she would have claimed Cinderella as one of her daughters. When she was still just Cinderella. Yeah, I, I I didn't think Cinderella right off the bat, but now that I now that you guys brought that up, I'm like, oh yeah, that's the only and other Anastasia the I can think of. Mm -hmm. And she was in the beginning. She was in the first episode. Cinderella was in the first episode, and I'm like, why would you bring in that? Like, 
Grumpy is in a lot of episodes, so it kind of makes sense to me mm-hmm. that you would bring in him as a character. But to have Cinderella randomly show up out of all the people in Storybrooke that you could have picked to have a reference yeah, cause to. Because she's not on Once Upon a Time. Yeah, she, yeah. We haven't seen her in almost a whole season. So. Right. So to me, it just seemed like, why would you do that if this is not what you're going to reference? I don't know. It, it, it brings up kind of that crossover idea, which you know, we it. did see it with Robin Hood. Yeah, so mm-hmm. I'm, I'd be excited if Cinderella kind of maybe had a bigger role in Wonderland compared to uh, in uh, just once. So who knows? Who knows? So they go down. Uh, Anastasia basically says, screw you, mom. And then they go they go to Wonderland together and um, they're struggling in Wonderland. <laughs> And the thing I noticed the most was wherever they were filming it must have been insanely cold. Did, did anybody see how, like, her face looked, you know how your skin starts to kind of look a certain way if you're so cold? And she mm-hmm. had, like, her nose is always, like, kind of red and there was precipitation around it. I'm like, it must be freezing where they're filming. <laughs> Why are they doing this? Outdoor I shoots. I don't yeah. know. I mean, I felt like it was just showing that how it was just – really showing somebody who is very different from the red queen as we know her now you know and because they're uh, they're living out in the woods they mm-hmm. don't have anything so she has no makeup and so i don't know i i, didn't I thought really they were trying anything. to make her look yeah like kind of worn and torn because broken down yeah because she does get broken down yeah. to the point where she's just like well like i'm over it like i'm over this love story that we thought we had like this is not what we said it would be what we right. thought it would be well, I also, I also, just to me, it just seemed like the set, the actual set was cold. It's like, yes, she doesn't have any makeup. Yes, she looks worn down. But I'm like, she's also like foaming at the nose a little bit to the point where your nose starts to like glisten and drool when you're cold. I was like, oh, I hope they're not actually torturing her. <laughs> I hope that's just really clever makeup. Um, I love their accents. Like, because obviously. They have adorable accents. They, they, they tweak kind of the Cockney ac- mm-hmm. British accent. And I. And even Wills, I think, was a little like he's always kind of had that Cockney accent, yeah. but it was so much thicker in these flashbacks. And I just think she does it on purpose. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah and it's I think it's so good. Uh, it just makes me happy. It reminds me of like you know Charles Dickens things. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I love the Cockney accent. I think it's adorable. I just liked that she made a different. She she made that choice to differentiate <clears throat> when she speaks as the Red Queen versus when she speaks as Anastasia. And we saw her at the party listening to how the other women were speaking right. and kind of mimicking, mimicking them, them. Mm-hmm. which was adorable. I think, though, to me, because she always – she's very ambitious. And it seems to me that, yeah, she loves Will kind of, but it's not enough. It's not enough compared to her ambition. And even – you see that even in the party. It's like she wants to get the dress. She wants to go to the party. And Will, because he loves her so much, is just going to do anything. So he says, okay, he steals this dress, they go to the party, and um, and then she starts to learn how to speak, like, the the rich people in the Darling. party yeah. room. I think it's interesting, too, because when they jump through the glass, you know, they didn't really know what to expect in Wonderland. Exactly. But they expected their lives to instantly be changed, and I think that, you know, if I'm thinking now, if I were to move to Europe tomorrow... I would go over there. I wouldn't know anyone. I wouldn't have anywhere to live. You know, I'm thinking of all these things. And that was never an instance, a thought to them. You know, they were so young and naive and in love that they just kind of jumped into this whole scenario and then were left with basically the same lives that they already had. Their lives didn't change. They just changed the location Mm -hmm. of where they were living. Yeah. So I thought it was kind of interesting that, you know, they just went without really thinking about how they were going to make their lives different. They just went for it. It's like the symbol. To me, I saw it as like the symbol for the American dream. It's like if you're you're in this location and you're poor and you're in this land and you're like, okay, I hear so many things. And especially like when you think about the history of America, you couldn't exactly get like today you can get all the information you want on another country. Back then, it's mm-hmm. like, okay, you might get pictures here or there, outdated information and things. So they only have the bits of information they have, and they're they're like, well, it has to be better than here. It's Wonderland. We hear these rumors, so they're to me, it's like they're in, they're embarking on the American dream, and it goes wrong. It's they, it, it's not what they. It's expect like death, it of, a to be. <laughs> it's like death yeah. of a salesman. Yeah. Um, and what did you guys think? Because I love the line when she said, "I always thought that Wonderland, the wonder, stood for wonderful, yeah. mm-hmm. not you know, wonder where we're living tonight." I always took Wonderland. I never thought of it as wonderful. I don't know if when i hear wonderland i think of like all the different 
scenarios, all the wonders that are out there that could be, could be happening. What do you guys think of when you like initially heard Wonderland? I remember when I was a little girl and even when I watched like the, the Disney movie, I thought Wonderland was wonderful. It was this fairy tale land that, that Alice gets to escape to. And, you know, it, it's wonderful for, I don't know. I always just, I thought, I thought it did mean wonderful. wonderful, even though she does have to deal with the red queen and a lot of scary things. And, you know, in the end she realizes that her family's really what means the most to her. And that's what makes her life wonderful. But I don't know. I Wonderland was always kind of like a fairy tale land to me. And, you know, it's, it's exciting and different and, I, I would have thought the same thing. Wonderful. I feel wonderment because uh, to me, it's it's not – some of the scenarios she gets herself into when she's in Wonderland are kind of scary, mm-hmm. and some of them are kind of cool. So I think it's just the – it's just that feeling, that natural feeling of awe and reverence, kind of a wonderment for – this is so interesting and different than anything I ever know and I've ever known and some of the experiences are bad and some of them are good but it doesn't make it less awe inspiring. Yeah. But I think um I think you could see it anyway. It's like when you're when you're in a situ- bad situation, you can think, "Okay, I just want to go somewhere that's wonderful and why not Wonderland?" It seems like it would coincide. Yeah. I see her point of view. Mm-hmm. Um so they they you start to see the breakdown and difference between the characters. Will is truly a Will is always going to be that like cockney rogue kind of character. And I I like that he stays true to his character. He, it almost reminds me of in Rapunzel, Flynn, who's the oh, yeah. Flynn Rider. Rider. Flynn Rider. <laughs> he gets to be the king or prince or whatever essentially because he marries Rapunzel, but he still always that character at heart and that's what i that's that's one of my favorite princes because of that this is my question though because so you know we see that obviously she's very ambitious will mainly just loves her but how does i just want to know now how he's going to become the knave of hearts because he's going to get a title in some way but how i feel like it comes whenever her husband goes away or dies or whatever happened to her husband Maybe that's when Will got back in the picture or maybe she was trying to help him out because she realized she kind of burned him. But... I mean, and you can tell she's still very hurt in all the flashbacks and like she's so torn up about this whole Will thing even to like, you know, when she blows the dust on him, she can't even like, I thought when she blew the dust on him, I thought before she blew the dust on him, she was going to kiss him and see oh, if that, that worked. Nice. But she didn't. Know. She didn't Pissed try off. it. I'm jumping ahead a little bit. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, I think, I think the the Knave of Hearts is a reference to the Card Army. I would assume. So, who the Queen, the Red Queen is the not the Red Queen, the um, Queen of Cora, Hearts. the oh. Queen of Hearts is the one who has the Card Army. So I would assume that he would have been part of her army before she was defeated. And now I'm questioning, like, where does she come in? Because uh, we know Anastasia becomes queen by marrying this king, king of wonderland so where does the king come from what what where does where's the queen of hearts in this um in this setup well i mean if you look at like uh at, like the enchanted forest there's a lot of different kingdoms kind of mm-hmm. throughout Within. the yeah throughout the enchanted forest and different princesses and um kings and queens and stuff so it could just kind of be like that situation but maybe it's maybe it's war that is going to you know put put these two at odds against each other again and he's going to be fighting for the for Cora and you know the Red Queen is fighting for I'm really interested to see like how that plays out because we know now that she didn't nec- she didn't um, because of the timeline I mean, we know that she didn't steal the crown from her it, like um, unless she, the red the um the Queen of Hearts was married to that guy and then died somewhere in there no so she would have been alive still because yeah. She was in because she came to like Storybrooke and stuff. Right. So that's why I'm thinking. But maybe maybe Cora got there and just kind of declared herself queen. <laughs> she's Cora yeah, because she's Cora. True. She just walked in and that was like, you true. know what? I'm the queen up in this house now. <laughs> this okay. is my castle. This is my castle. I rule the world. Maybe there was kind of some civil war where like yeah. she came in with an army, the card army, and then like fought uh, fought the red queens for the crown. I don't know. 
to be seen. Yeah, to, to be, be seen. seen. So she, uh, they, they concoct this plan to steal jewels and go back to their land. And she, this is though it was a little bit of a weird scene where the guy comes in, catches her, ste- the king comes in, catches her stealing jewels, and he says, "Oh well." why don't you just marry me? And I'm like... I agree. It was weird. It's like, that's kind of weird and I'm like, creepy. You could they, be her father. Yeah, couldn't they have waited a beat? Like, not even the father stuff, because we already have some sort yeah. of, like, weird parental relationship situations back with, like, Jafar and his lady. <laughs> um, so I've I've even put that out of my mind. I was just like, that seems rather impromptu for the situation maybe they could go on some dinner dates first well and then bam and then the, makeover like yeah out. they yeah. walk out on the balcony here's your queen i was like when was the wedding he's been standing out there for 10 <laughs> minutes waiting for her to drop some jewels that was the other thing that bothered me i was <laughs> like did you literally just drag a priest and like or whoever master of ceremonies get married and then walk out of the balcony in the 10 minutes poor will has been waiting outside where did all the people come from yeah it's supposed to be late at night they're supposed to be walking in to steal something while people are sleeping i assume (laughs) you don't just go in there in the middle of dinner to steal some jewels and then all these people are just randomly first it's just will outside and then one person walks by and then everyone's just standing there waiting for an announcement like, the people of from? Wonderland are a hungry bunch of people. They're waiting for signs about people to be posted. They're waiting for announcements. I have a blade. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're waiting for they're waiting for um, beheadings. They're just milling around yeah, Wonderland, they're just always around. For, they don't yeah. work. It reminds That's me of like, it's like The Sims. You know, in The Sims, <laughs> when you like go to like a, like the you go to like the mall or something in The Sims, you just have all these random people wandering around, or like on Wii, when yeah, you're, like in like the middle of the yeah. game, there's all these just random people, and you're just like they're just like milling about. And you're like, yeah, what? Why are you here? <laughs> it's totally what it is, and they don't they clearly don't care if things are being stolen. They just want to hear announcements. Yeah, exactly. It's again, it's very much like the capital, you guys. They yes. don't do anything. They don't do all anything. they care about is like what show the capital is going to put on but i feel like the people in the capital have homes like (laughs) they do but they're all about kind of being outside and show flaunting like you know what they look like and they're crazy i don't know yeah but we haven't seen any neighborhoods in wonderland that is my concern you know we see them (laughs) standing on the in a road in the middle of nowhere reading a sign about a beheading happening but nowhere in sight is a home or a school we did see a a crossword Road. The home that um, oh, they were there attacked was, by. But there's no other houses around it. Yes. And I get that there's a lot of space and, you know, it's kind of like a hilly, mysterious world out there. But it's like at the same time, how do people get together if everything is all they over the place? They just about <laughs> until they find <laughs> each other. Uh, so in, in the present time, we have the Queen and Alice are together. They're riding in their carriage and the Queen... Um, the queen convinces Alice that she should, I guess, steal this or get this magic powder for her dust. Mm-hmm. At first, I, I was like, is that fairy dust? I thought fairy dust, too. I know. I, was like, I, was, I thought they were going to tie in like a Peter Pan thing, and I thought she was going to send her to Wonderland, but that's beside the point. Neverland. Um, Neverland. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. That's, what I, that's exactly what I meant. Too many lands here. Too many lands. Um, but they have this conversation in the car that I was I thought – was um really fascinating because alice says to her what more could you possibly want and she says there are some things that all the wealth and power in the world cannot get you so it's she has all this wealth and power and it's like she wants more than anyone can ever have which is um it just shows her she has a very greedy personality Mm -hmm. um and We learn from her flashback and from this conversation that everybody comes to Wonderland wanting something. And she says, she says, you wanted your father's love. And so we're alike. I want something. You want something. And Alice is trying to say, no, no, we're nothing alike. We're nothing alike. Um, And so, I mean, I guess we learn in the end. I don't I don't even think we learn. Like, I do think they're they're similar in that they both want something. I mean, obviously, Alice is the more pure of heart. I don't think they're that similar because I think the queen, I mean, obviously in this instance, the queen was like wanting that dust out of love for Will, but the queen doesn't really give a crap about other people where Alice, like Alice she's morals. motivated by like helping others. The queen mm-hmm. is motivated by helping herself. And I think yeah. that's, the, that's 
he makes them very, very different. They're both very motivated and ambitious people, but not. I think that's what the queen was speaking to, that they are similar. But in the end, like we saw when Alice was down there having to deal with her demons, she chose to be different than the queen because she chose to spare her life. She chooses to do the right thing where the queen chooses to do the wrong thing. So they do have the same obstacles and um, ambitions in life. But when they get to that crossroads, Alice always goes in the right, in the direction of good and she's going in the direction of you know just me 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 yeah and i think it's because the queen said she'll do anything to get what she wants Mm -hmm. you know and she's like you're not willing to do that but i also think conversely that it is important when you have when you have a good guy and a bad guy pitted against each other i think it's more interesting when you are shown their similarities Mm -hmm. so you can see where one person diverged down one path and one person diverged down another path because it, if, th- and this is what I said earlier when I didn't care as much about the queen, and now I'm finding her, okay, this is interesting. She has this backstory where she really struggled, and that is where, that is where caring for a character comes in and where you don't just say, okay, I'm going to dismiss this character. I just hope they die and they get killed off. Like now. lizard. Yeah. <laughs> like lizard. <laughs> lizard. lizard. Until we know your backstory, you should be killed off. <laughs> um, but one thing that I was kind of mad at Alice about was the deal that she made with the queen because the queen said basically risk your life because you're going to go do a task that no one has survived trying to do and in return I'll help you find Cyrus not I'll give you if I'm risking my life for you you're going to give me my boyfriend you're not just going to say you're going to help me find him no matter what, you know, her plan was to double cross her anyways. But I was just like, Alice, come on, let's be more specific with our deals here. Like, I need you to be on top of that. I mean, well, technically in the end, she kind of did because yeah. if it wasn't yeah. for the Red Queen telling her about, like, you know, kind of getting her to face her demons and find get this magical dust, then she would have, she would never have been able to see Jafar's castle. But how can we talk about the creepy little Alice down oh. in the pit? At first, no, I was, was like, no. I was like, why is, is she? Happening. Yeah, I was like, why is she seeing her like ring version of herself? Why did she have dreadlocks? Why <laughs> was she a little Rastafarian Af- Alice? It because was because so she was weird. bad Alice who was tempting her, and then she became good Alice when she passed the test. It was weird. And was was, was that the same little girl that we saw in the pilot? I don't think it was. She looked a little different to me, too, but I'd have to go back and watch yeah, the pilot just to make sure. If Maybe guys, she grew because they shot the pilot, pilot like five, six months ago. I guess. So. But if, if, if you know, you guys out there know, tweet us, comment on AfterBuzzTV.com. Or rate on us, iTunes. Or on iTunes. Rate us. All that fun stuff. Give us four stars, right? No, five. We want stars. five. Oh, we I thought five. that four was the highest. We're not being we want mediocre. Five stars. Here, we want excellent. I'm not going for a B here. I want the A+. Plus. Yes, I want five stars. <laughs> I thought four was the highest you could get. We I'm read sorry. your comments on iTunes. I love them. I read them uh, on YouTube as well. And because YouTube, I guess it's like easier to respond now on YouTube. I try I try to get to the iTunes comments, but you can't like read Bond directly to people on iTunes. So yeah. That's yeah, the hard part. That's... Comment on YouTube or on AfterBuzzTV.com. But rate us on iTunes. Yes, yes rate us on exactly. iTunes and download. Uh, and download on iTunes. It's because... free. It's free. So what's stopping you? And you can listen to it in your car. I've heard people say that it, it's nice to listen to in traffic, which we have a lot of here. And um, <laughs> And from some of the comments, someone uh, people are mentioning all their theories, which are really, really awesome, cool theories. Um, and someone mentioned that maybe Lizard is uh, Mushu from Milan. Oh. And I was like, I would like that. I would like her to be relevant. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I don't know. I that's weird. I'm sorry. I'm okay with that. <laughs> Weirder things have happened on these shows. It would make more sense. It would make more sense. Mm-hmm. And then they could bring Mulan in, who's currently not really doing anything on regular ones. And maybe Mulan and Lizard will have like a relationship because yes. obviously we know that Mulan uh, is, bisexual. is bisexual. Yes. Oh, I would like that. Okay, that's a good plot line. I know, and then we get a love triangle between, like, Mulan and Will and Lizard. (laughs) (laughs) 
tension. <laughs> so many tension. Um, and Ryan, uh, someone who comments very often on our uh, YouTube videos, mentioned all the other shows a lot of these actors are in, and so you should check them out. Um, I can't recall them all now, but you should definitely go to YouTube and read the comments. <laughs> But can we, there, to me, there was a huge Indiana Jones reference in this. And I know Disney, does Disney own Lucasfilm? Or they, well, they have, they the do. Dis, they have the ride at Disneyland. I was just at so Disney have... on Wednesday, and the Indiana Jones ride is so much fun. It is yeah. so much fun. Um, so What was the, the reference? Okay, so when it's, she says, uh, she's like, oh, how am I supposed to get across? And she shows her the stone that says, the pure of heart should get across. That the scene when he's in uh, the last movie, the, the, the Crusade, the Phil. What's the last? Wait, movie are we talking the last one with like Shia? The last Shia? Crusade. No, 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 no. Okay, not, we're not talking. Shia. Uh, I pretend that doesn't crystal exist. Skull. Okay. Thank no, 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 not the Crystal Skull. We pretend that's that doesn't exist. That's not a real Indiana Jones movie. The Last Crusade. Last Crusade. <laughs> yes. Okay. So in the Last Crusade, when he's going, uh, he's going to to get the chalice, the the Holy Grail, the Holy Grail. He he is. There's something to the effect of if you believe uh, you can get across this like chasm, it's the same. It looks like the same thing. And I thought when she stepped out, it was gonna be just like in Indiana Jones. Sorry for the spoiler, but it's an optical illusion. He he can't see the bridge because it looks just like everything around him. So when he steps out because of his faith, he he steps onto hard ground and crosses this thing. And and said for her, it was some kind of like magical love thing that apparently isn't strong enough her love for cyrus isn't strong enough and she falls down to another hole that looks like the hole in the first indiana jones movie that uh he falls down in no but i think i think that's what it was supposed to be it was it wasn't supposed to make it all the way across because down there was where she she had to face her demons right. yeah to, to prove Truth that it. she was pure of heart that is true so it, she was never going to make it all the way across it she was supposed to fall but that was a really deep hole. What? And for her not to die, like, and then the queen falls down and she doesn't die either. I'm like, okay, maybe, maybe a smaller hole next yes, time. So it but doesn't... the queen did look a little bit more disheveled than Alice did after her fall. Yeah. Because the queen, the queen got up and her crown was all crooked. Her hair yeah. was slightly messed. Her <laughs> collar was like off to one side. Alice got up and was just like, yo. She was like, bam. Hello? Can and you hear me? She just like like kick flipped up and was like, "Hey!" Yeah, she's like, All right. "Little Alice." Gets her sword out. She's like, "Where are you? Come out!" You know, she was ready to fight. I thought it was weird though that the queen, the Red Queen, could see Little Alice, and she could hear her and see her. I felt I wish that would have just been something that was in Alice's head, and the queen would just be like not understanding what was going on and if Alice was going to kill her or not. I kind of felt like she needed to see the little Alice though, because if not, then she would have just seen Alice basically going crazy and not yeah. realize the importance of Alice not killing her. Yeah. Like the queen needed to realize it too because she was then more scared because, you know, she even kind of had a tear coming down her eye at one point because she's like, Alice is about to kill me and I can't use magic to save myself. Can I say that the queen or Emma Rigby, who plays the queen, in almost every other scene, her eyes are, like, welling up. Like, it looks like she's going to cry. So That's yeah. what I mean. Maybe it's so cold out. My eyes do that when it's cold, her, too. And it's so cold like, that her, her eyes are welling. <laughs> I always took it as as a character choice because as strong and, you know, as evil and strong as she wants to come across, she, at the end of the day, she is afraid and you know she's kind of stepping out of her comfort zone because there's been a lot of scenes with her and Jafar where he's you know in her face and she's like well don't test me either and she it takes everything in her to stand up to him and as soon as he goes away she's kind of like oh my god okay cool we're still good like that I, I kind think of it's a- also though it's when you think you want something you get all these things and you have you have money and you have power and she still wants more and she's trying to fill some sort of void that can't be filled with money and power. And Alice and even magic. called her on it. Alice yeah. is like, "You have everything anybody could ever want. Mm-hmm. You have money. You have power. You had and you, you know, you had somebody to love you, but you're never gonna get that now." But and I she think doesn't that have is her like, mother's love. That is true. Just Maybe like Alice doesn't have her father's love. Yes. Yeah, so that's how they're similar. Mm-hmm. Their parents love in that respect. Boom. Shakalaka. <laughs> Bam. So maybe and maybe it's know. a the the teary eyedness aside from the extreme cold of what I imagine the set of Once Wonderland, um, is is her feeling regret over her actions. But she's gone so far. It's like it's like at some point when you're that when you've gone that far, you just keep going. 
I think it's just a sign that she does have a little bit of hum- her humanity switch is still on. Oh, she does somewhere does. buried yeah. down deep inside there. But you know that's part of you know the tears and sort of the flaw that is her is that at the end of the day she still does have that little shrivel left of her humanity that's keeping her um, the human red queen, and not the, the evil queen. Yeah, the red <laughs> queen and not the evil queen. Exactly. Because so, Regina, her eyes don't well up. Yeah, no. no. Regina's she's like, like, bitch, I don't she cry. does it. Yeah, he was <laughs> like, move kids, get out my way, flick of my wrist. <laughs> so uh, so little Alice explodes with happiness? I don't know. She, she explodes into fairy dust and... Not fairy dust. They just it's said not dust. Fairy, yeah, oh. it's just I don't want she, fans out there to get on us for saying it's fairy dust. She explodes into magic dust. <laughs> magic dust of some unknown... Magic. A lot of magic dust. A lot of magic that dust. That will fight against dark magic or something. Will, like, protect from the dark yeah, magic. Yeah, well, that's what the, the Red Queen yeah. wanted to protect against Jafar's dark magic. Mm-hmm. So. so the Red Queen basically does a switcheroo and is like, oh, I'm not really going to help you, ha, 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 and, like, takes the thing. But Alice does her own switcheroo and has some of that dust with her, which she uses to locate Jafar's castle, which is conveniently located on the tallest mountain in Wonderland. Why didn't you think of that in the first place? (laughs) Right in front of where she happens to release the dust. (laughs) Hello? Like, when the castle appeared right there, I was just like, okay. I was like, couldn't you have turned around, Alice? But maybe it's over here. (laughs) Maybe, like, an arrow of dust that you would have to follow. Like, it was just so easy. (laughs) Yeah. Except all those trees that it's, you know, just like a canyon of all these trees and then this random mountain with a cat a rock with a castle it's i was like where mountain. where do yeah. people live down there this is supposed to be all of wonderland where is the town <laughs> they're just walking around like <laughs> sims in that fog <laughs> uh, <running laughs> with little other. like hashtag symbols above their heads um so the queen wonderfully uses it to bring will back to life i was but like doesn't so stick around uh, see she, it happen to let him see that it was her. I think that she does it though because um, she's so she's so power hungry and so disconnected from him, and he's a part of her past, and she cares enough about him to let him be alive, but she doesn't want to be entangled with him anymore. Well, he gets he's her weakness. Yeah, she she doesn't need she right now she can't have any weakness because Jafar will find it and will play again, mm-hmm. play it against her. So she lets him free, and he does kind of like a, you can't see me if you're on iTunes, but he's like, whoop, 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 ing around until he stands up. And um, I'm really happy that they're going to have him in another episode. Well, it, we got him this whole episode, too, so we yeah. didn't have to deal we didn't with an episode have to without, with Will. Him without Will. I do love Will. So Jafar, meanwhile, is plotting in his Jafar castle basement situation. Um, and the white rabbit, who he cuts off his foot. Jafar, <laughs> you are the biggest jerk that ever jerked. Lucky rabbit's foot. Uh, with the biggest... Not off, <laughs> just jerked. Um, off is a situation he, he that's put separate. It, he put it back on. Uh, he did, but he cut it off in the first place. Jafar is so, Jafar is brutal. He will do anything. So he well, basically cut off a live rabbit's foot. I know, mean. With pink eyes and a cute suit. He that that was the best CGI they have is the rabbit. He's oh, yeah. the rabbit's he great. great. He's great CGI. Um, and John Lithgow is the voice. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And yeah, he's really good. He is really good. So uh, Jafar basically blackmails the rabbit. This poor rabbit. He's like <laughs> he just gets tossed and turned. <laughs> He's like, he's Rabbit like, just needs to bail out of Wonderland. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. He needs to dig himself out of Wonderland and just stay Shh. gone. Yeah, he runs Jeez. from the Red Queen, who's blackmailing him, into Jafar, who is now going to blackmail him. Because Jafar's like, oh, I'm sure you have some sort of situation. I bet there's something on his family that they have. And um, to make him betray Alice, because Jafar points out that they were such good friends. And then the uh, the white rabbit gives him some secret on Alice, a person that she cares about that her is father. not in Wonderland, who is pretty much That's her father. That's the only person I could think of yeah. the whole episode. And so uh, Jafar has him dig a hole and is possibly going to see Alice's father. That in London. Be... In London. In alternative universe, London. Well, you know, the one good thing that'll come out of bringing Alice's dad into Wonderland He'll believe her, oh, and then true. boom, no more daddy issues for Alice yeah. because he'll love her and she'll love him. And true, I'm not sure Jafar is the best thing to, <laughs> to bring them. No, not but... not the best, but you know, at the end of the day, Jafar might do something great for that family if he brings back her father. It's true, he's got the blowout. To yeah, save all I blowout. mean, and Jafar's got daddy issues too. So yeah, he has his dad. He has who we think is his dad locked in his ton basement 
tower situation. Um, so speaking of basement tower situation, Cyrus cuts the hole in the bottom of his cage, frees himself, um, manages to kick out a guard, grabs the guard's keys, tosses them to the prisoner, and the prisoner doesn't take them. And he's like, no, you won't be able. The, that whole excuse was just weird because he was like, I only know what the prisoner basically says. I, you don't know what's on the outside and I do. And I like, I. He's going to slow him down. Yeah. But, but I, it's weird because it's like, wouldn't you want to take the guy who knows what's out there, even if he's going to slow you down? Uh, I The whole time I was kind of, I was, I didn't think Cyrus should even have tossed him the keys. I thought Cyrus should have been like, all right, dude, I'm going to go out here. I'm going to get some genie powers, get my girl, and we're going to come back and defeat Jafar and, and get you out of this cage. Yeah, I agree. But I just thought that, you know, especially the way that they were oh, they were working him so hard with, you know, moving the rock, the stones up and down the stairs, and he's just so exhausted physically. Yeah. You know, it has nothing to do with his age. It's just the way that they're, tor- quote, unquote, torturing him, you know, through the physical labor. I was like, he's just going to slow him down, and he just needs to get to Alice faster. Well, we also learned that he has a family because one of Cyrus's arguments for going is, isn't there, like – isn't there somebody you care about? And um, Jasmine. Yeah. And we're all like, oh, it's got to be Jasmine. Um, and so he does this like far away look thing and kind of hems and haws. And then Cyrus is like, you can build a new life. And then eventually Cyrus is like, okay, peace out. I'm so surprised he didn't just come out and say it. I like, know. They just beat around the bush so bad with that guy. Like with everything, with who he was, who he loves, who he, why his relationship, what his relationship is with um, Jafar, like, yeah. every single answer was so cryptic, and I was just like, we all know what you mean, <laughs> just say it, dang it! Like, <laughs> unless they're gonna have him be someone completely random, but I really think he's the sultan. Yeah, I, I really yeah. do. That's, that's what makes sense in my head, too. So Cyrus is running out, and he runs into the bunny, and, uh, he's basically like, don't give me away, and the bunny's like, uh, mm, eh, okay, okay, go along, and then which manages to have the bunny be captured by Jafar, which sucks because... The bunny could have ran. He could have. He could have just keep running. You're a bunny. You're tiny and you can drill holes. Why don't you just drill your own hole? I didn't understand why he didn't make a hole and him and Cyrus go through it. Yeah. I I wonder if he can use his... (laughs) That sounds bad. I wonder if he can dig his way, like, to other points in Wonderland or if when he starts digging, he has to leave Wonderland. He probably has I wonder to what the Wonderland. rule, what the rules of his hole yeah. digging magic is, because we don't really know the I think the he rules has of to it. Leave under uh, Wonderland just because, and this is only because of the actual Wonderland story, because she falls down the rabbit hole and ends in a different place. So I would assume it's always got to be a different. Place. But I wonder, in like a quick fix like this, you know, he's on the run. Could he have, you know, started digging and ended up being in his rabbit hole at home with his wife and maybe his 15,000 bunny rabbit children. <laughs> this bunny is not thinking of his, like, he's not thinking on his feet. Yeah. I mean, I would. Well, he lost one today, so. Yeah. <laughs> poor, <laughs> poor guy. Poor guy. Poor little guy. So, uh, so Cyrus escapes and we don't know what he's going to run into when he gets out. Jafar kind of said, you know, good thing you didn't go out there because, you know, it's one thing to get out of the castle, but yeah. what's outside of it, you know, you wouldn't be able to handle and then Cyrus is out there just kind of like, yeah, I'm coming for you, Alice. But Cyrus, like, like, I'm going to attack him. Remember how Cyrus, what Cyrus and Alice were doing before, like, which they were traveling, they were, like, learning about different things. Like, Cyrus is old. Like, he looks hot still, but he is old. He's been traveling around different worlds for hundreds and thousands of years. So I think I'm not worried about him. I'm not worried. But did you guys notice when he was um, standing outside – and he's kind of looking off, and they give you that whole view of Wonderland. There's like a red flare in the distance. Yeah, um, I thought it was at where Alice uh, was. Yeah, I thought it was where Alice Maybe was with um, her necklace glowing mm-hmm. because it was. I assumed it was at the same point when she was standing on her ledge saying, "I'm coming for you, Cyrus," and he's standing there, "I'm coming for you, Alice." And I was like, I wonder if they saw each other. When they they prob- did that. Well, I don't. She probably didn't see him, but it's he like a wishbone. Yeah, yeah, like the wishbones they coming back to together. Yeah. But yeah, there's like this red flare in the distance, and at first I thought it was just I a CGI error. That. But no, but I rewound it. Probably- <laughs> I was like, oh man, their CGI messed up again. <laughs> oh, no, it's probably her necklace. <laughs> yeah, I, I definitely agree with that. Um, so any any thoughts before we go? Do you guys have news and gossip? Yes. No. I don't. No. no. 
yeah. predictions? We can talk about those. And now, your After Buzz TV predictions. Keaton, you start. Oh, you always have I, good ones. No. Oh, uh, that's because I always go last. Um. Uh, <laughs> well, I think, I think, Will and the Queen are gonna something's gonna happen again with them. Um, and I think, uh, I I truly think that the other person is a Sultan, and I I feel like we're gonna meet Jasmine not in this next episode because obviously in the scenes for next week it showed that Alice is going back. Mm-hmm. Or I think it was a flashback. Or a flashback of her when she was at home in London uh, with her father and her whole family. So we're going to get a little bit of backstory about that. But I think not that episode, but the following episode, I think that's when we're going to meet Jasmine. Um, And I'm very, very excited. I feel like she's going to seek out Cyrus to help her get to her father. Because obviously we know Jasmine is not just the princess to sit around and wait for things to happen. Mm -hmm. She's very much a go-getter doer. So... If her father's in trouble and has been in prison for a while, she's probably trying to fight and find him and fight Jafar or something. So, I I, th- I think she's gonna she's gonna become a crucial part of this. Some either Cyrus is gonna run into her or Alice is gonna run into her very soon. I oh. just had an epiphany. So if okay, is it like the Medusa epiphany? <laughs> no, 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 it's not that good. <laughs> Nothing will ever be that good. So so if Mulan just joined the Merry Men. Right, and we have because Will, through Will we now have a tie to the Merry Men. So what if what if that's the Mushu tie because she is now part of the Merry Men and they come in somehow into Wonderland. Oh, and that's how Lizard is Mushu because I want Lizard to be somebody. Otherwise, they're gonna have to kill her off because she has nothing to do <laughs> besides steal. I like it. Randomly. I like. I, that. I forgot. I completely forgot that uh, but... that Mulan did join the Merry Men. So that. That does make sense. And they did just kind of drop her. They were were like, look, she's bisexual. She's joining the Merry Men. Now you're never going to see her again once more And that way she can have a romance or some some sort of romance that's not one-sided. Maybe they'll pick up Jasmine and her and Jasmine will fall in love. Yeah. She'll show her a whole new world. (laughs) Yes! Yes! Put me on the board. All right. Yeah! Um, (laughs) My prediction, I'm starting to think that the previews for next week are setting it up to look like it's Alice's dad, who's the person who she cares about more. But what if it's actually like her sister? I, because I, I like if it. the Sultan is in the cage already, then we already have one father captured by Jafar. We don't need another father person in Neverland. We need like her sister. And I think that the tension between Alice and her father might be too much. Whereas does Alice have a sister? I could be making all this up. But if she has a, I feel like she does. Yeah, I think she had. I think he had like yeah. other kids. So if it is like a sister, maybe her her sister she had was the an only older, one in the storybook. She has an older sister. Yeah, mm-hmm. maybe her sister was the only one who kind of believed the stories and was a supporter of her. So that's why Alice cares for her more because her dad didn't believe her, and maybe her sister actually did believe her stories and like stood up for her a little bit. So maybe it's a sister that. Jafar's after and I now. and I think she lost her mother. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's kind of how I understand yeah. understood the yeah. pilot. And it looks like in these flashbacks, we're going to see the mother, the father, and then two daughters. So yeah. one probably being Alice, and I think one being her older sister. Because mm-hmm. um, if you guys, I don't know if you guys remember in the cartoon version when right be- Alice is out the with her sister, reading, with, yeah. sister. Yeah. with her sister reading, and that's when she falls yeah. down the the hole so yeah so maybe it is I, I think sister. that's great i like yeah. it. i think I, it's I really sister like not the dad yeah i like that because i th- i think they do that a lot they mm-hmm. they try and give you okay maybe it's this and then they turn it around like the frankenstein story i was so convinced his name was whale i was like you be maestro <laughs> you have to be maestro and then he wasn't yeah so i feel like they're doing the same thing where they're trying to they're trying to make you think one way so i'm always trying to think of the opposite that. way yeah I could definitely see that. Yeah. Sneaky, sneaky, sneaky. Sneaky sneaks. Okay, well, thank you for listening to us. Yeah. You can find me at 123Jackie underscore B on Twitter, at 123Jackie B on Instagram, Keaton. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at KeatonM33. And you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at the Tiana Hobson. Thanks, you guys. Rate us on iTunes and talk to us on YouTube. We love your comments. Yay. From executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. 
To watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz you later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.